now on BBC One, the show that always speaks for itself. Good evening, everybody. This is Matthew McConaughey saying welcome to the Graham Norton Show. <laughs> show. Oh, so many great guests for you tonight. I tell you, my sofa is going to be like Theresa May in Parliament this week. Totally stuffed. <laughs> and a God lover. On Tuesday, the Prime Minister managed to lose three House of Commons votes in the space of an hour. An hour. In one of the debate things were so bad, she actually received fewer votes than Noel Edmonds. Yeah. <laughs> Is he the good grace to leave? <laughs> By the way, did you know this? I only found this out this week, that after, you know, I'm a celebrity, after they make them eat those disgusting things, they have a way of getting the celebrities to vomit. All right. <laughs> that would work, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> mm. uh, the, the I do feel a bit now. Uh, the government. The government was also found to be in contempt of Parliament over access to legal advice on the Brexit deal. This is the man who gave the advice. There he is. Mmm. That's <laughs> Attorney General Geoffrey Cox. Now, apparently it's quite unusual to see Cox addressing Parliament. <laughs> well. uh, <laughs> let's get some guests on! He's one of our most loved chefs and restaurateurs. He's published 20 best-selling cookbooks. Here to tell about us his latest, Jamie Cooks Italy. Please welcome Jamie Oliver! <laughs> Woo! Hello! How are you? Lovely to see you. Nice to see you. Have a seat, dude. Yeah, it is that time. It is that time. She's an Oscar-nominated actress, pop sensation, and one of Hollywood's hottest rising stars. Now she's saving the world in the new action movie Bumblebee. It's Hayley Steinfeld! Starring alongside Hayley, he's a 16-time world wrestling champion and WWE superstar who is now kicking ass on the big screen. It's John Cena! <laughs> Oscar-winning Hollywood icon. Now he's back at our screens in White Boy Rick. Please welcome back the great Matthew McConaughey! Welcome, everybody. Hello, how are you doing? You're good? Yeah, very good. Yeah, you all look well. You look happy. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. You were telling me backstage I'm the only one that didn't get the memo about the Well, I did. Is it dressed down Friday? I don't know, but apparently it is. You look on any household. Hi. Everyone else made an effort. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, listen, I, we are very lucky on the show. We often have, you know, very esteemed, acclaimed couches. But I think this is the most varied couch of achievement. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's lots of different achievements on this couch. Uh, hey, Steinfeld, Oscar nominated. Well done, you. Congratulations. <laughs> but, but, so that's already very impressive. This is impressive slash annoying. Uh, how old are you when you got nominated for an Oscar? I was 14. Well, wow, I know. <laughs> nothing. You've done nothing with your lives. Uh, <laughs> That was, of course, from True Grit. Yes. There you go. Uh, look oh, at there. Oh, the baby. <laughs> uh, and uh, we have to say welcome to John Cena, uh, uh, one of the great... Hey, it's to be here. This is my first time. It's the first time. Yeah. And uh, normally, you know, it's fine. Everyone walks on to the theme music. But I felt bad making you do to our theme... Because you are, I think, probably our first guest ever who has their own theme music. 
Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes so, territory. So <laughs> if we were, so if we play it, if we, if you, would you like to come on to your own theme music? Well, there's a trick. Uh, it's kind of an audience participation thing. They'll love that. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> they will. They will. See, look at them. They're they, will, they will love it. It's a catchy tune. Lots of brass, uh, and the trumpets go somewhat like. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. And the WWE audience is very excited and very dedicated, and they sing along with the brass. And the chorus is John Cena sucks. <laughs> John Cena sucks. Is there a way of showing they like me? Yeah. Uh, so are we gonna do this? Yeah, let's do it. One, two, three. John Cena, John Cena sucks. sucks. John, John Cena sucks. sucks. Thank you. I think we're warmed up. Let's okay, do let's do it. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome WWE superstar John Cena. That's the lyric. John Cena sucks. Here we go, here we go. John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. That's my life in about 20 seconds. <laughs> That's your intro song. <laughs> Over the ring? Oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> tens of thousands of people will say, John Cena sucks. So every night, go out with a smile on my face and <laughs> but told us. And the more you put your hand there, the louder they get. Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. It's like a shit. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Even in the reverse, too, if you act like it doesn't get to you, they know they're yeah, getting right. at you. Yeah. There's no way around it. And uh, talking of music, this is a, such a bizarre thing. Uh, Matthew, one of your standout performances in The Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I know. Uh, you're amazing. Right? Now, you've talked about this before. What would you call the, 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 the beating, the, the humming mm -hmm. beating thing? I'd call it off. Yeah. The, <laughs> so the, the humming and the beating yes. has now been sampled. Uh, it has on... been sampled in quite a few days. Yeah, I hear it's it a lot. It's sampled on this dance track. So this is your Wolf of Wall Street thing in, in a song. Here we go. Where are my residuals? <laughs> Give me the right? mailbox money. <laughs> I think that's the name of the song. <laughs> but now, here's the weird thing. So you kind of think, oh, right, someone on the couch got sampled in a song. He's not the only one on the couch who's been sampled in a song. Jamie Oliver is also uh, in a song. Uh, <laughs> this. this this is the Jamie Oliver Pucka Techno Remix. Oh, for God's sake. Pucka. Pucka. Hey! Pucka. Pucka. Which part are you doing? Garlic and lemon. Oh, yeah. Garlic and lemon. Oh, yeah. Garlic and lemon. Oh, yeah. It's good! Garlic and lemon. Garlic and lemon. Pucka. Garlic and lemon. Pucka. Oh, yeah. Pucka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Christmas, your house. Well, yeah. <laughs> Pucka. Oh, dear. Is that real? That's all. Oh, we didn't make it. No, that's real. Who does that stuff? I don't know. I don't really enjoy it. Are there people actually... <laughs> does it, do people club to that? Maybe they did. I don't know sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> the moment may have passed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, we're going to start tonight with Bumblebee. Uh, this stars uh, Hayley Steinfeld and John Cena. It's previewing next weekend, and then it opens everywhere on Christmas Eve. And even with the poster, you can tell this is a Transformers movie, but this is a, a kind of origins movie. It goes back, right? Yeah. It does, yes. Yeah. It takes place in the 80s. Uh, it uh, precedes all the Transformers films that we've seen and love. Uh, and it, yeah, it's the origin story of Bumblebee, so we get to really see where he comes from and how he becomes what we, what we know him to be. And you're a young woman who kind of bonds with Bumblebee. Yes, yeah, so I play a, a character named Charlie Watson. She's uh, turning 18. She's working a uh, dead-end job to save up for a car because a car, in her mind and in most people's, represents independence and freedom. Uh, and she is struggling with, I mean, the struggles of growing up as a teenager, trying to figure out who you are and what you're good at, what your, what your voice is. And um, she's suffering from a loss. She lost her father. And so she's trying to feel uh, understood by somebody because that was her person, that was her best friend, and that was a person she felt really saw her and heard her. And she loses that um, only to hope to find something that fills that gap. Um, and on her way to finding her freedom and independence in a car, she uh, discovers that the one she ends up with isn't 
Just a car. No. Yeah. And, and John, your character is quite ambiguous. In wrestling terms, are you more of a baby face or more of a heel? You have done your homework, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Google works here. My goodness. <laughs> okay, for those not playing inside baseball, a baby face is a good guy, a heel is a bad guy. And in this movie, I am both a heel and a baby face. Oh, that is true. That is true. We yes. see all sides. Indeed. Yes. Uh, this is a clip. This is a clip. This is the two of you and Bumblebee in action. Get out and move away from the vehicle. Stay cool, Bumblebee. What's going on? Hey! Come on, drop it! Let's go with me! Weapons now! Take it down! Run! No, don't run! Do not run! She ran. Good. That thing looks so real. Uh... The Bumblebee, it really, you really forget. It, like, it seems crazy that that thing isn't there. Not, not it's not at all. It is not there at all. <laughs> <laughs> not in the slightest, unfortunately. Yeah, the cost of a Transformer minus CGI is about $7. <laughs> it is a long piece of PVC pipe and a tennis ball. <laughs> but, it, it, but they've done an amazing job with it. They really have. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, this is set in 1987. So, Haley, what were you doing in 1987? Well... <laughs> No, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't born yet. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this little dive back into the '80s. Uh, I had some interesting conversations with my parents about their experiences in the '80s. Yeah. Uh, John, I've heard quite a bit from you. <laughs> the 80s. You were only ten, in fairness. '87 was a tough year, dude. <laughs> I was a young boy growing up in New England. '87 was a tough year. Red Sox just got whooped in the World Series by the New York Mets. New England Patriots got their keisters kicked in by the Chicago Bears. That was a whole year of me walking with my head down. These were dark days. Yeah, dark you, days. And you want to bring it up like, you were only 10. <laughs> 87, man. 87. But I like, I like that, Haley. in this film, you were using props that, to, on a, to my mind, was just like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. But you were dealing with things you'd never really seen before. Yes, I had to be uh, shown how to use a Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> Other items that I came across that I, I tried for a moment to uh, act as if I knew what it was, but I didn't get away with it for long uh, without asking. But uh, I do have to say, our, our director, Travis Knight, um, as, a, as a child of the 80s and a fan of the toys uh, and of the, of the movies, he really not only brought to life this incredible world of the 80s that feels really authentic. He created a space for me, uh, and I never felt, like, entirely out of place in any way. Um, it was really made so that I could step right in and feel feel right at home. But John Cena now, I, this is a, a weird kind of, almost like a link to Bumblebee, because when uh, you were starting off in, in wrestling, you had a persona that, am I right, was sort of half man, half machine, was that yes, the idea? Yes, that's correct, yes. It this was, was prototype. It was awful. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, uh, you want to try to find a persona, or here's some more inside baseball for it, a gimmick. Oh. Where is a, is it describes you as a character, so like when you walk out, people notice you, and they kind of, you can describe your character. But in... these are not gimmicks, these, this is real. Well, well, I mean, if they work, it's, yes. But you kind of, it's, it's a it's is... trial and error process with a lot of errors. And, uh, and my first try was, uh, the prototype, which was half man and half machine, and 100% crap. <laughs> but given that you're not half a machine, how did you demonstrate you were a machine? Well, I, I used this ability to talk rather monotone and would say things authoritative, and just when I said I would kick your ass at the fairgrounds on Sunday, I would rewind it and say it again for you. Is the only thing they say I would kick your ass at the fairgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work? <laughs> you... No. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't. That's a good but, but, one. Yeah, but, it, but, but it worked on one. I have one. Yeah. I'm in. You found I'm huge it. success as John Cena. Imagine that. I figure I need to come up with some sort of name. Yeah, look, every, doesn't every, every wrestler has a name? Doesn't yes, it? and people think that, like, hey, man, how'd you make up the name John Cena? I was like, no, dude, I would have made up, like, Dick Hammerbush or something cool like that. <laughs> 
No, I'm DJ Cameron. Or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's a star. <laughs> no, we can move from there. No one's letting you go out with that, no. <laughs> But uh, they actually think that John Cena is a, a gimmick name. But no, that's actually <laughs> through all the, the presentation that is WWE. I'm and, stuck and, with John Cena. Are you a wrestling fan, Jamie? I used to love wrestling uh, when we were much younger, about the same time as Transformers. Back in the day, we had Big Daddy. Yeah. Yeah. The Giant Haystack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I used to love it. I thought it was just fantastic. By the way, I'm John Cena. <laughs> all, these, all these awesome names. <laughs> you know, the ultimate drooler or like no, nothing. Eh? And wrestlers like to have uh, signature moves and things. Yes. And one of yours is the you can't see me. But That's th correct. Is that true that came out of your family somehow? Yeah, I was, I was dared to do it. So I was actually making the music for my own theme song that you just so heard and finally serenaded me to. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and we played it for my brother. And the first time he heard it, this was uh, the, the uh, 50 Cent's crew uh, had a, a really popular song called In the Club. And he heard it the first time, and instead of dancing, like he was our litmus test to see what songs were good and what songs were bad, he did this. Oh my God. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, no, everybody does this, man. Everybody does this. And I guess this was from 50 Cent's video. And he's like, you won't do it on TV. So what the hell do I got to lose? Am I going to fire me? Of course I'll do it on TV. <laughs> but instead of doing this, I did this. <laughs> and now for 15 years, <laughs> because of a dare, <laughs> I've been doing this. <laughs> and I'll do you one better. People actually think I'm invisible. There will be people <laughs> to look at this couch and be like, why is there nobody next to McConaughey? <laughs> we said John Cena would be there, but we can't see him. <laughs> so, you, you never know. You remember Hacksaw Jim Duggan's and King Kong Bunny yes. and Skandar yes. Akbar's yeah. and Von Erickson. Care Von Eriks and Carrie the Claw? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I got yeah. kicked this out of Texas Hirsch Coliseum. We're talking Texas wrestling. I get kicked yeah. out of Hirsch Coliseum in Shreveport for pelting Skandar Akbar with a bag of tomatoes on the apron. <laughs> Skandar Akbar was a man dressed as a sheik that used to throw fire. Yes. And he managed King Kong Bundy, who yep. was like 484 pounds. And remember the missing Leotard link from Singer. Parts Unknown? Yep. And, oh, remember yeah. the green oh. face, Ooh. spit green mist? They sound really good. Good stuff. Yeah. It's, it's entertaining. It was so much fun. And, and I'm John Cena. <laughs> but he's got King this. Kong Bundy. Yes. 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 Listen, we're allowed to move on to Matthew's film. Uh, the film is called White Boy Rick. It opens tonight. Uh, this is a tough tale. Yes. It's, uh, and it's, it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. So you play Rick Sr. Rick Sr. This is a story about Rick Jr., the, the, the young man who plays my son. Richie Merritt. Richie Merritt. True story. This was the youngest informant in American history. Um... He, this is in Cleveland in the 80s. And the uh, FBI came to him to be an informant and help trying to bring down these uh, dealers and track where the money and how far up the political uh, um, ladder it went in, uh, in Detroit at this time. Well, if you're going to be a good informant trying to bring down dealers, you need to be dealing yourself. Um, so he was 15. He gets busted by the state. And at that time, it was a 600-gram law, which means if you get busted with over 600 grams, you go to prison for life, even at that age. And obviously, he and his dad go to the feds, who had him as an informant, and said, do you have our back? And they could neither confirm nor deny that he was an informant, and he was in jail for just over 27 years, and he got out four months ago. Wow. Really? Yeah. I mean, and this father, I've heard you in an interview say that this is the character that's furthest away from you. Yeah, well, in the fact that this guy is... I mean, I've never... This is this role is my sad country song. It's... It, I've never... What I mean by that is, you know, the, you know, mama got run over by a train the day I got let out of jail. It's like bad luck on top of bad luck. This guy is a loser. He loses continually. He's a, he's a guy, his heart's in the right place. He has all the want to, but he's really a bad dad. He doesn't have any of the follow-through. One of those fathers, one of the first things that got, gave me a track on the guys, I, we all know those fathers that want to be best friends with their children at all times. And it's usually not the best recipe for raising a child that's ready to go out into the world. And this was one of those fathers. He couldn't lay down consequences for his children. And there was a lot that he and his family had to pay for that. And listen, we've got a clip. Uh, this is uh, you, as the father, having a disagreement with your daughter, who is played by our own uh, uh, Belle Powley. She's yeah. wonderful in this. She, she's trivia. You might know her. She was in Informer. Tremendous uh, actress. Here we go. Get back. Get off 
off of me. Get back in the house, Don. Go in the house and get dressed. No! Get Dad! inside that. Huh? Stop. What? No. No. Ah, oh, Christ. Keep going. I got it under control. You don't need to stop the car, Pop. Everything's fine. Don't get out of the car. Everything is not fine. A man just ran out of your house almost since my Imperial. You don't have a goddamn thing I under control. You. You're not going to let her talk to you I'm going to the goddamn Shut house. Up. I got oh, this Christ. under control, all right? It ain't under control. Hey, stay out of it. Looks like Richard's having a bad day. No, Ma, I'm not having a bad day. My son and I walked into the lion's den this morning and walked out with the golden fleece. Ain't that right, Ricky? That's right. That's right. You're pathetic. Both of you. Hey, put some clothes on, will ya? We're going for custard. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a little romantic comedy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, uh, obviously, somebody played your mother there, but your own mother, I know she likes to visit you on sets. Did you visit you on this set? Yes, she did. Yeah, no. because... Oh, there's your mom. Uh, a lot of families like to visit sets because they get to take pictures of people and it's fun. But your mom's, like, hustling when she gets to the Absolutely. set. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, my mother, you know, she says she wants to come to see me, but <laughs> we, we already had that discussion. Mom, if I was an accountant in Chicago, you wouldn't want to come and see me. <laughs> I told you, no, I wouldn't, because what do I want to do, son? I want to get in that movie. She's been to all my sets, and she's she's persistent, and she has it. She has a pitch that she's not got not gotten tired of. Mm -hmm. That she continues. She's 86 now, and then she wow. she finds she comes to me and says, "Who's who's who's the person on set that can make it happen? <laughs> who's, who's, who's the one with the money?" And I'll go like that guy. And I've learned to send her to the wrong people sometimes. <laughs> but even then, her pitch is this. Okay, <laughs> remake of the Graduate. What? What's so funny? What's so funny? No, it's a great idea. Look, I'm the Anne Bancroft character. Matthew is the Dustin Hoffman character. <laughs> and what does everyone right away say? Wait a minute, that's pretty bent. <laughs> and she's immediately like, oh, knock it off. I've seen it before. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> she's, she wants to do a remake The Graduate. She started off wanting to just do Golden Girls. <laughs> that didn't happen, and now she wants to do a remake The Graduate. And she wants me to be the Dustin Hoffman Barnes. Yeah, there's someone to make some green Freudian stuff there. in there. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Anybody said, I'll think about it? I, I, you know what? I, I no. Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could kind of work, but I don't, I don't know. But she was kind of responsible on, on setting you towards your path of stardom. Didn't she enter you in a competition when you were quite young? Well, yeah, she ordered me, entered me in a lot of competitions. This, it's kind of, I mean, kind of part and parcel to the same woman who I just explained to you. Um, there was one competition, it was a poetry competition. And, uh, um, well, there's poetry competition, there was Little Mr. Texas. Let me just tell you Little Mr. Texas one. This is, this is the same woman, you'll know exactly You've what I mean. You've got a picture of you as Little yes. Mr. Texas. <gasps> this, so this picture, there I am. <laughs> little Mr. Texas, right? She tells me, at eight years old, 1977, you won Little Mr. Texas. So I was Little Mr. Texas. Until about 26 years old, how many years is that? 18 years later, one day, I've got the picture, and I decided I'm just gonna zoom in on that trophy. Can you zoom in on that trophy? No, we can't, I don't think Well, so. anyway, it says runner-up. <laughs> <laughs> it says runner-up. Right. And it's same lady. I enter a poetry contest, and I write a nice poem. I think I show it to her. She goes, yeah, that's not bad. Go try again. I go back in the room, try again, come back. She goes, that's not bad either, but here, have a look at this poem. <laughs> and I look at it, and she goes, isn't that a good one? And it says, if all that I would want to do is be to sit and talk to you, would you listen? I think it was E.E. E. Cummings. And I was like, yeah, that's a good one. She goes, do you like it? And I go, yeah, I like it. She goes, then it's yours. And I go, well, what do you mean? She goes, well, you understand it. It means something to you. <laughs> Therefore, it's yours. And I go, well, what are you saying? She goes, write that. <laughs> and I go, and sign E.E. E. Cummings. She goes, no, you can sign it, because you understand it. <laughs> I won the contest. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, she's a yeah. bit of an outlaw. Don't try this at home. Uh, <laughs> now, Jamie, you were born into this. Like, you were like Jesus. You were born in an inn. <laughs> uh, I was born in an inn, <laughs> yes. Because your parents, they ran a pub. I still do, 40... Three beautiful years later. Wow. In Essex. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, that was my whole life. Uh, growing up in the pub, uh, 
Locals, I still think the pub is the most democratic, brilliant place on earth. Everyone's welcome. Uh, I learned a lot about people. That was my real school, I think. And it kind of runs out the family because one of your grannies was uh, a publican as well. Yes. And then your other granny was it Granny Bessie? Yes. Now is Granny Bessie still around? No, sadly she left. Well, both have sadly left us yeah. now. Which but is Bessie a shame. used to be part of the big family Christmas, yeah. didn't she? Massively. And why did you pick? Because it seems like you picked on that on Granny Bessie. <laughs> Not really. We, she she loved a bit of attention. We we've obviously done Christmas specials for the last twenty years, and she's oh I love this. This is great. And uh, she used to come and do a bit of filming with us. Uh, she's very cuddly, very gorgeous, and I think Christmas is about family. Um, but you know she used to come and stay with us at Christmas as well. So <laughs> this is a brilliant thing to do. So do you have Christmas crackers in America? We don't, but I just found out what they are. Good lad. <laughs> oh, I is it the same one? It's not a euphemism. Uh, well, I mean, it depends. OK, yeah. so uh, you can make them yourself. You the, can get the type that you hold on to and yank. Until yes! Until something, <laughs> something fun comes up. Uh, <laughs> Christmas cracker? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Haley's mind is going crazy I'm, now. I'm really <laughs> trying to follow here. So a Christmas cracker, <laughs> you, you put on the place setting of the, what you would call the Thanksgiving dinner, which we call Christmas dinner, uh, and uh, you have the cracker. It's basically an empty toilet roll uh, with... <laughs> Another empty toilet roll. It's really weird, actually, when you think about it. Uh, cut in half, and then you wrap it up and tie a little thing. And, of course, in, it looks beautiful. Right. Um, and then they thought to make it a bit more fun in the 60s, they put a cap, you know, from a cap gun. So when you pull it, it goes... Psh! OK. Uh, and then you put a joke in there, and you put a present in there, and a hat in there. It's normal, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what I like to do... Inside I... the toilet roll? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's... I'll but show it's you. It's not later. a big gift, Matthew. It's not, you know. <laughs> but all of, all of the crackers, even the posh ones, have rubbish gifts. And, and, and I, I personally think the jokes are rubbish as well. So I have this thing called Hack the Cracker, which is brilliant because you can kind of strategically look around the table at all the characters. And then you hack into one side of the, the cracker, you pull out the joke, you pull out the rubbish toy, and then you can procure toys that make people feel good or bad about themselves. <laughs> Right? So, in the case of my nan, she just got a new boyfriend uh, after losing my poor granddad, uh, and, and many years later, though, uh, and, um, <laughs> and I, I went into Boots and, and I got an empty packet. I said, can I have an empty packet of Viagra, please? And they went, went oh, yeah, please. And they went, so I got a pack. They were very helpful. And then I got, I got some Smarties and filled them up, put them in there, <laughs> bang them in there, and then and, and wrapped it up, Christmas Day, put the name on the cracker, she opens it, she, present comes out, Viagra, boyfriend next door. Her face was like... <laughs> <laughs> I went, no, 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 don't worry, it's only, it's, it's only smarties. And she went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, but oddly, grandmothers play a huge part in your new book. They do. Uh, yes. They do. Uh, this is Jamie Cook's Italy, and it's out now. And so th this is you... It, it, it took a long time, this book. I mean, how long? Uh, nearly two and a half years. Wow. Um, it was a big job. And um, the, I, I really had to do it because I be believed it was the last generation of nonnas that grew up without gas, electric, you know, all the mod cons, like the real cooks. And we needed to catch them before they passed on. And uh, so we had to pull our finger up. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, How did it, you find them, the nonnas? Um, well, we have recently... What do you mean, nonnas? Like uh, Italian uh, grandmas. grandmothers. OK. Like, so there's it, one. Nonna Miriam. Yeah. It sounds really romantic, but actually, technically, filming and sort of documenting cooking with nonnas, it sounds great, but it takes out. It's, it's slow production. So, um, so we were like a year, year and a half over budget, <laughs> over time. Um, and, um, but what we, were, we did get to document the most incredible recipes, techniques, um, and, and all the things that they were brilliant at. I mean, basically, it's like going to see... You know in Star Wars when Luke goes to see Yoda? I, I basically went to see, like, 50 Yodas. And um, they were like the sort of zen, like, ninja warrior masters of cooking. And they were teaching me how to use the force and uncook. Uh, and what that means is, like, we're trained to cook proficiently, and they're like, no, 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 yeah. this is how we do it. We crack it, we rip it, yeah. we tear it, we get amongst it. And actually, the nonnas were answering a lot of the questions that we talk about in the press today. Waste, nutrition, taking a little a long way, you know, cooking on a, on a small budget, they were brilliant. Because it strikes me, you know, because there's some really ambitious things in there, but there's, you know, ba more basic things like pizza, say. You yeah. know, did they teach you kind of new techniques or new ideas about simple things like that? Yeah, because a lot of it is about simplicity. So there's stuff that you can put together in ten minutes, but you slow cook it over the day, like six, seven hours, and it's tender and delicious. There's versions of what we would call the bolognese in different shapes and forms that would just blow your mind. Then we're in the north and we're meeting the people uh, who are now 85 that used to pick the rice for the risotto and we learn all about the risotto and then quick salads quick pastas and of course you've got the pizzas in there but really i, I think um i learned a lot about soul 
and what not to put in, you know, about restraint. The mm -hmm. most important ingredient is restraint. And I'm sure it's the same in acting. It's sort of maybe what you don't say than what you do. I don't know. It's, it's, it's about being confident and uh, working with what you got. Because, yeah. John, I know you certainly were a big fan of pizza. Was it... Is it called Zeppe? Zeppe? Zeppis. Zeppis pizza. Zeppis kept me alive, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, real, for real. It kept me alive. Because, what, you were working in a bar... I was, I was doing any job I could to make any money I could, and I was bouncing at a bar next door. Uh, this is a strip of stores on a beach in Southern California, and I was trying to just get by because the cost of living out there is atrocious. And the place next door was a deep-dish pizza place called Zeppi's, and they ran a promotion. If you could eat a 12-slice deep-dish pizza in one <laughs> no. sitting, you get it free, and you get a coupon for another pizza. <laughs> After a week, I put them sons of bitches out of business. <laughs> They stopped the promotion halfway through the week and literally <laughs> closed down shortly thereafter. Oh, did you really close them down? Yeah. I was, oh my God. For about a week and a half, I was the Zeppi's pizza eating champion. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> You're damn right. Very good. I just wanted to ask you. You're still wrestling, like you're still in typical yeah. condition. Yeah, I'll, 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 my next match is December 26th, Madison Square Garden. Oh my God. Wow. Right. Yeah. Uh, for the holidays, I'm going to see Bumblebee like 200 times, just like everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> and then right after that, I'm, I'm going to WWE. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but now, I've seen you do a thing, and I, I like, you're oh, in no. a suit, but can you do it? The, the deadlift <laughs> thing. Yeah, 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 hold on. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's space. Uh, come here. Just, just... No, no, that was, that was, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally easy. It's totally easy. Uh, right. Oh, don't, oh, no, no, don't, don't now slam me on my back. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the takeoff's easy. No, I'm so oh, holding on you. My goodness. <laughs> no, 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 no. So we're going to set you down, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm an elderly gentleman. <laughs> and a good sport. And a very good sport. But let me tell you something. <laughs> December 26th in the Madison Square Garden won't be so gentle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can't see me. Yeah. <laughs> that you found that so like that was ridiculous. I, that, yeah, that was weird. That was like a machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, amazing. Uh, right, it's time to meet my next guests. Uh, one is a five-time Grammy-winning record producer, and the other is one of the world's biggest pop stars. Please welcome Mark Ronson and Miley Cyrus. <laughs> there they are. Down. Uh, Slide down. Okay. There goes Mark. There goes Miley. Welcome. Hello. 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 Thank you for having us. Oh, God. No. Thrilled you're here. Thank you very much. Uh, before we say another thing, uh, we should congratulate Mark Ronson on a Golden Globe Woo! nomination. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice thing. Very exciting, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this was for uh, Star is Born. This is for the song Shallow that I co wrote on Star is Born. And it's, yeah, it's super exciting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oscars to follow. Nice. <laughs> hey, now, by the way, do you all know each other? Uh, Miley, who, who do you know? Hi, everybody. I think we've worked together a couple times. We did the VMAs together, and I've, have we all seen we each other We almost worked now? together. When? Now? No, no, Magnum. I think your kids were there. Magnum. Did you meet my kids? It sounds strange. No, but I was supposed to. Afterwards, we're going to hang out. Cool. I told them I was going to take them to GAY Magnum. if <laughs> not tonight. Do you guys want to switch places? <laughs> no, we're OK. No, we're OK. And I met, I met Mark here just recently in Sicily. In a steam room. Yes, together. <laughs> no joke. I, I walked into a steam room and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, and I said, you know, I'm a, you don't mind me saying I'm a big fan of your work and, and, and uh, you seem really cool. So I sit down for a bit and he started talking to me and he's like, we're going to go jump in this ice bucket bath as well. So <laughs> I didn't want to like, look like a punk. So I was like, oh, OK, I've never done that, but that sounds cool. And I get in, and it's the most freezing thing I've ever felt in my entire <laughs> life. But I'm next to Matthew McConaughey in this tiny tub, and I want to look like tough. <laughs> and, and I'm like, and he just looks at me, he's like, breathe. So, um, <laughs> so now I take this cold shower, like, Every single morning, like, and because yeah. the ice cold shower, and I, I think of you every morning. <laughs> <laughs> when I get in the shower, I'm not joking. It's really, 
So thank you for letting us have this. That's tonight. nice that you had a Indeed. little mini reunion here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, so listen, uh, Mark and Miley, here you are uh, together. So how did this collaboration about? Was it kind of Team Miley calling Team Mark Ronson, or how did this? How did this happen? This is Mark Ronson stalking Miley Cyrus for four years. <laughs> <laughs> he has a story that I don't remember it exactly this way. So do you want to tell your story that you made up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Miley on television singing uh, on the Saturday Night Live 40th anniversary. I knew she could sing and everything, but I saw her sing Paul Simon, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover in a way that just, I was just transfixed. So I got a number. I don't know if it was legal or not. And I started, <laughs> I started texting and I just said, hey, if you ever want to make some music, you know, um, and then you know, four days went by, nothing. This is the part I don't days. remember. I feel like I must have sent an emoji at least. <laughs> I think. The broken heart emoji is great to have because when people text us that they love the song, you just put the broken heart emoji. Yeah. 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 I think you would text me back like after a few weeks and just write like, what's up? Probably late at like four in the morning, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And that went on for four years. <laughs> but we believe, I believe, my family, we've always talked about timing and trusting the universe and always trusting that, you know, timing, that everything is always works out when it should. And I think we've said it multiple times to each other in the studio that any time before this would have not been right and any time after this would have been too far away. I think it's perfect timing with this song at the time that it's out in the world. That's why we made the video that we made and the visuals that we've created. Yeah. It's just such a timely song for me and my personal life and what's going on in the world. So I wouldn't have it any other way than sitting with you right now, yeah. right here. This, this song only came because of where we were and how we met, and, and the, I've, I've, I agree. Cosmic. Yeah. yeah. And listen, everyone's talking about this extraordinary video, and I'm right, the, the, the whole car chase, the concept, was this down to you, Miley? Well, he was very trusting. I had this idea originally of, we've worked with each other on multiple songs on my next record, and we worked on this song for Mark's new album. Um, but we didn't know what was gonna come first. Um, oh, we're gonna watch it? Well, a little bit, yeah. It's There's little some bit. old ladies anyway. kissing in the hot tub. It's all crazy. <laughs> but the, the budget on this thing, I mean, this is like a movie. <laughs> That's what we wanted. Well, I had this I had this idea of, like, for the music that we were working on is having this idea of putting a car in places that it shouldn't be and putting it inside a living room, inside a club. And then when me and Mark decided that this was the song I was going to use kind of coming out of my, you know, blackout and for his new record, his first single, and we thought what is actually heartbreaking to us in society every single day, I think it's waking up to new devastating news of violence and judgment and hypocrisy. And so to make a video that's, again, like I said, it's very timely and it's about a deeper heartbreak than just losing love in a romance or a relationship but what really breaks us apart you know every single day well listen uh, the, your car awaits uh, we might have to pay waiting if you don't hurry up so uh, if you'd like to make your way yes over, please you want to uh, let's go let's do it okay. there you go there you go so performing nothing breaks like a heart it is Mark Ronson featuring Miley Cyrus You, it cuts you deep and leaves a scar. Things fall apart, but nothing breaks like a heart. It doesn't break like a heart. I heard you on the phone last night. We live and die by pretty lies, you know it. Yeah, we both know it. These silver bullet cigarettes, these burning outs, there's nothing left to smoke in. We both know where we got all night to fall in love, but just like that, we fall apart. We're broken, we're broken. Mm, and nothing, nothing, nothing gonna save us now. Well, this broken silence, like thunder crashing in the dark, crash in the dark. Great. 
Terrific track. I love that. And am I right? That's the first single off your new album. It is. And the first time we ever performed it together. And the first oh, time. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel it was a good start. Yes, it was a very you. good start. It was flawless. Thank flawless. You. And uh, when's the album out, Mark? Uh, I think it's probably going to be out in March. March yes. 2019. And what's it called? It's called Late Night Feelings. Late Night Feelings. Yeah. And is that indicative of the album? Uh, did I feel things late at night? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it is. I think that, you know, it's sort of like, I, I called it this thing, basically sad bangers, like songs that make you dance, but they have like a little bit of emotion and like melancholy. So that's kind of like, late night feelings is just things that you think of at night. That made no sense. So. Yeah. <laughs> much, yeah. You're good. Well, we look forward to hearing it all. And uh, Mark Ronson, Bonnie Cyrus, everybody. Thank you. Before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello. Hi. Hi, you all right? Hi. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous? Uh, uh, what's your name? Leanne. Leanne. Are you okay, Leanne? Yeah, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, all yep. right, Leanne. Shall I just let you go on with your story? Go for it. Okay, Leanne, off you go. So, time of your life. I'm on my first ever girls' holiday, 18 to 30s. We're in Tenerife. We're having a party at the end of the night, so we've got everyone over. We noticed that there's people filming across from us, so we're like, mm, what are they up to? So my friend and I decided to pull a mini. So, flash our bum for those who maybe don't know what a mini is. <laughs> so, a few weeks later, I'm sitting and I ha I've got a new partner, so I'm meeting his parents. We're sitting watching a television programme, and the next minute, the hotel that I stayed in appeared on the television. So I was like, oh. <laughs> so then, oh. the next minute, my bum appears along with my friend. <laughs> the holiday show is called Holiday Packages from Hell, and that was my <laughs> last time of seeing any of those. And a John Cena moment happened. <laughs> <laughs> you can walk, you can walk. No <laughs> wonder she seems depressed. Bless her. <laughs> The horror of seeing the hotel and going, wonder what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, who's up next? Who's up next? Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name's Mark. Mark? Yes. Lovely. I'm, you're from Ireland, right? I'm from County Cork in Ireland. You're away. <laughs> All right. Am I in your story? <laughs> <laughs> Not the ones you want to hear. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> off you go with the story, Mark. Uh, so, um, I injured my foot uh, in the summer and it was really, really badly damaged. And I said I'd just leave it, leave it, leave it, but uh, it never healed. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll bite the bullet and I'll go to the physio. So the funny thing is, like, I really fancy my physio. She's really, really good looking and unfortunately I have really hairy feet. <laughs> so I didn't want to go into the physio with my hobbit feet. So I decided on the last minute just whip off the hair on my damaged foot. So I went in anyway, put, put the bad foot up. She was checking it and checking it and she, she couldn't really see what the problem was. So she was like, can you just pop your other foot up there just so I can look at it? I was like, oh, no. So anyway, I dumped the 
got her foot up and uh, she kind of has a smart grin on her face and uh, she's examining again and she kind of just steps back and goes, don't worry, Mark, you'd be surprised how many people come in here like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> You can walk. Yeah. You can walk. Well done. That is all we've got time for, I'm afraid. If you'd like to go in the chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website at this very address. Please say thank you to all of my guests tonight. Mark Ronson! <laughs> Cyrus! <laughs> Jamie Oliver! <laughs> Hayley Sandfeld! <laughs> John Cena! <laughs> and Matthew McConaughey! <laughs> Join me next week with Supergirl Band Little Mix, top comic Bill Bailey, Strictly Judge Dame Darcy Bustle, and Aquaman himself, Jason Momoa. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye! <laughs>《Travels》come to an end, well for now anyway. It's the series finale of Doctor Who, Sunday at 6.25. Get into bed with musicians and artists for Frank Undercover Chats of Duvet Days. Download the BBC Sounds app to listen. And did you check in the second section?